our this standard of care will now be recorded. Suitable and authorized investments, reporting requirements, and investing procedures. So those are all items that were updated in this new policy. As of May 25th, we did furlough um, a number or um, about half of our full-time staff. We did a combination of um, some staff that are uh, completely furloughed, some staff that are considered essential and are still working, some staff that are a mix that have been furloughed but will be working minimal hours. This is all uh, dependent on programming and as our programs resume, we will be uh, bringing back staff based on those programming requirements. We are working with all staff as far as um, protecting their benefits and helping them with their uh, filing for unemployment. And this is the time of year that supervisors are always busy with finishing up their staff uh, performance evaluations for the year. Uh, those are still continuing. Um, if staff are still working, they're still holding um, online emails with their staff or by phone. Um, if the staff is not working, then they're gonna hold off until staff returns to work. That's my report tonight, if anyone has any questions. Any questions for Marla? Commissioner Robbins? Yes, uh, just one question, Marla. On the updating of the investment policy, were there any big changes to um, these um, different uh, categories? No, I, I, I would say it was more of a cleanup um, than big changes. Um, broke out some, some of our objectives on safety, liquidity, and return on investment. Got a little bit more detailed on those pulled out a couple types of investments, such as commercial paper that we choose not to invest in, um, not a safe enough investment for us, um, updated with any uh, terminology from the Finance Officers Association, so we're just keeping in step um, with their recommendations, and updated our reporting requirements so that what we actually report on a monthly or quarterly basis matches what's in our policy because those things tend to kind of change over time and we want to make sure our policy policy reflects what we actually do. Great. How often is this uh, up, updated, This policy, these policies? It's on a schedule to update every five years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Marla? Thank you, Marla. Next item is the Recreation Superintendent, Tom Ritter. Tom? Good evening. Um, <clears throat> our community gardens are now in full operation and have sold out. We have 65 plots in three locations throughout the community, nine at Hartman Park, 20 at Century Park by the Boat Docks, and 36 at Indian Wood uh, location, which is the north end by Century Park North. So those are our, uh, fully open. Um, the only thing I'll add to Jeff's report about the skate park is that the hours uh, are 2.30 to 7.30 on Fridays and on Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 4. And again, those are one hour time slots that you can reserve. If you're a resident, it's all online. If you do show up and there are open slots, you're welcome to skate. But we have had probably about 50% of the slots were, were full with 10. So uh, to avoid being uh, unable to skate, I encourage you to go onto our website and reserve a slot. Um, but we had about 125 or 130 of the slots filled this past weekend. I checked before the meeting, uh, we're at about half right now, but most of the, the signups have been coming the, the day before. So please uh, please sign up. Um, uh, the free movie that we're doing on June 5th and 6th are both sold out. These are drive-in movies at the Family Aquatic Center. Uh, we are showing Frozen 2. We are comfortable with 35 parking spaces. We think that's a good start where everybody should be able to see the screen and also be socially distanced. Those 70 slots over two days sold out in two hours. So that was great to see. Um, we'll see how this goes next weekend and I would be confident to say we'll be doing more of this in the future. Um, for those that are curious, we use the same 11 by 20 foot screen that we use for our movies in the park normally at Deer Path. It'll just be uh, staged on top of a flatbed trailer so it has some elevation so people can see from their cars. Um, proud of my recreation team. They've been 
uh, coming up with a variety of virtual programs since this COVID situation has started. I've mentioned a few of them each month. Just this past month, programs that we've added have been chess, hot shots, sports classes, dance, uh, Wicked Science just joined in, and we've done some esports. We're trying an a esports game called Rocket League that begins on June 6th and runs for eight weeks. And the registration for that ends this Saturday. Um, Camp has been taking up a lot of our time, a lot of preparation, now that we've just learned that we can offer day camp. Uh, I guess at this point, I would just tell our, our residents that we will have something uh, announced next week with more specific information as far as dates, times, and locations. But I can say that we're consolidating it into two locations. We're looking at doing uh, camp at the Sullivan Center for a younger elementary, and we're looking at using ele um, elementary North School for the older elementary kids. And uh, we will be following all the requirements of of the law. We will be social distancing. The kids can't be in groups any larger than 10. They can't mingle. They have to stay in the same group all summer. We're taking all those things into consideration in our planning. Um, we anticipate a, a late June start date. We have not we have not confirmed that date yet. Uh, camp was supposed to start June 8th, but that's uh, just too quick of a turnaround between the restructuring, the registration, and the training and hiring of staff. So look for more information early next week. And just finally, depending on what happens with aquatics, we've spent a lot of time developing a plan for what we will do at the Family Aquatic Center if that does uh, open. Uh, and that's my report, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Tom? Thank you very much, Tom. Next item on the agenda, Park Superintendent James Kim. James? Uh, good evening. I just want to start off by thanking my park staff for just keeping our parks open and looking well, considering that our traffic is probably tenfold in terms of people. Um, some more parks information. Some people have asked about our shelter restrooms opening. Uh, we do have porta potties stationed at many of our parks, and our park staff are looking at ways to opening our restroom shelters safely for both patrons and our staff. Um, look to have look to the website for more updates, but we're look we're shooting for a the week of June eighth. Um, rain, we've had a lot of rain the last, for May, and I think a lot of our park campers don't realize that our parks are kind of catch basins for water for storm water. So if you have any questions about your park and why there's puddling, please don't hesitate to call the parks department. Uh, the phone number is listed. Gross Point ball fields, um, John Christensen, our field maintenance specialist, he's been working hard on renovating um, some of the ball field, the three ball fields there. Right now he's working on field three. Actually today he just finished laying the sod for the uh, infield outfield lip. Um, so please, if you everyone can stay off field three in particular, because the sod is still very fresh. Uh, please look for the website for any updates. Uh, roofing. Anthony Roofing completed a roofing replacement at Peterson Park. They're supposed to finish up some detail work tomorrow. In addition, um, they also found and repaired a leak over the Group X room at Lakeview Fitness Center. Um, it wasn't as obvious as we would like to have been, so it took some investigating, and but they did fix it. And last, over our park maintenance facility at 1400 Indianwood Drive, our solar panel project is fully underway. Um, last Thursday, the contractor unloaded all of our solar panels and brackets and all the hardware and electrical components. And um, although they're only about 5% complete up on the roof, they had to inventory everything they had. Um, this was a almost a two year in the making project and the park district has not paid um, about one cent for this project. It was fully funded. And I just wanna thank Train for really helping us get over the top on this project. And to conclude my report, if there's any questions. Any questions for James? Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is Marketing Communications Manager, Cheryl Buman. Cheryl? Good evening, everyone. Um, as Jeff mentioned, we are a gold medal finalist. Um, happy for us again. Uh, Cassie and I have begun sh shooting some video footage and gathering some old footage and some new photos. So we are out in the parks today 
Uh, we'll continue um, and we'll be submitting it no later than June 15th. So it's a quick turnaround this time, but we'll get it done and, and I'm hoping for a win. Um, working on the fall guide, the first proof is done. Staff is reviewing it and that will be going, we are mailing it to residents only. Normally we, we mail it to residents and businesses. So just residents this time and it's a reduced pages and a little bit lower grade paper. It'll still be very nice and informative and that will be going into the mailboxes um, the week of July 20th to Vernon Hills residents. There's been a lot of community emails. Um, I do get a lot of feedback. Um, every day I'm answering um, at least an hour of, of emails regarding all sorts of subjects, but the two hot topics obviously is our Family Aquatic Center. People are wondering if it's opening, when it's opening, um, and also summer camp. So I know that we'll be getting more emails out very quickly um, and also some social media to our residents and our community to let them know um, what we'll be offering this summer. So stay tuned. For um, thank you to President Dorover. He did two really nice videos. Um, one about our general park district out in Century Park and another one for Lakeview Fitness. So I hope everyone was able to see them on our Facebook pages. Um, very, very nice job. Uh, all of our online classes, and we're still adding some more, they are available for everybody to see on our homepage. You can just click on the events calendar, which is right on the homepage, and all of our online classes are listed there, and registration um, is from the calendar also. Um, I did want to let everybody know, just a fun thing we did today, thanks to Tom for helping us out, but our mascot will be involved in a, really it's an Illinois Park District mascot um, video, just saying we're all in this together, but instead of people, it's all of our mascots. So we did film that today, and that will be posted on social media in the coming week. Um, and it, the theme is like, we're all in this together. So that's, you know, pretty nice. So um, that's it, just a lot of community, um, information going in and out if there's any questions any questions for cheryl <clears throat> thank you very much next item on the facility manager joe zimmerman joe good evening i kind of continue with the trend i just want to thank my staff they've worked very hard these last couple of weeks and uh actually basically everybody else in the park district as they've all been supportive and I've had to go with to them for certain needs. So um, just thank you, everyone. Uh, start with light. We uh, just completed a 15-day challenge on social media where we provided different challenges for our members every day. Um, seemed to go very well. We're looking to expand um, into virtual training, virtual group exercise classes, sometime in phase three, maybe phase four. We're still looking into the best platform for that and also the best equipment to use. Um, we'll probably do a trial run just to make sure that uh, it's a viable option. And <clears throat> the big thing is we will be reopening um, June 4th, uh, phase three, um, which will be group outdoor group exercise classes and one-on-one -on -one personal training. So we'll have uh, more information going out tomorrow in an email. And then also we'll send another one on Monday detailing how to actually reserve, the, uh, reserve a spot in the group exercise classes, um, and how to use our, our Lakeview Fitness app to do so. Uh, and um, that's there's a lot there, but it'll be in the email. And uh, just want to mention our member of the month, Howard Prager. Uh, he's been a longtime member at Lakeview for five years, very active in our group exercise classes, always a presence. Um, we just want to thank him for being part of the Lakeview Fitness community. So uh if there's any questions any questions for joe thank you very much joe next item on the agenda is commissioner committee reports uh there being none next item would be board correspondence we did receive a uh, correspondence from john keister who's on this call and uh, john was just expressing his desire for uh, how great the pool is and hoping that we can find a way to keep it open or get it open this year and uh, service the uh, residents as possible. So there is no unfinished business, so I'll move to new business. Could I, uh, ordinance 3-20, an ordinance making the combined, combined annual budget and appropriation of funds for the Vernon Hills Park District for the fiscal year beginning June 1, 2020 and ending May 31, 
2021. Could I have a motion to approve ordinance 3 20? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. President Dorhofer? Yes, next item on the agenda is election of president and vice president for the Vernon Hills Park District Board. I'm gonna turn it over to you, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so as a board secretary, uh, and this and it being our annual meeting, uh, this is the time of year where we uh, elect board officers. And at this time, I would uh, entertain any nominations uh, for the election of board president from any of the board members. I would like to nominate um, David Durhofer as um, our president uh, of our board for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. Are there uh, are there any other nominations from the board for board president? Okay. Um, seeing there are none, uh, we have a motion from Commissioner Robbins. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. I, I didn't think we need a second for a slate, but second if you need it. Yeah, Commissioner Kessler, I heard as a second. Um, so Amy, I'll ask for your uh, for a roll on uh, that nomination for uh, David Dewerhofer as president. Commissioner Moline. Yes. Commissioner Robbins. Yes. Commissioner Kessler. Yes. Commissioner Blue. Yes. Is it Dorhopper? Yes, and thank you all very much. Congratulations, Dave. Um, I'll now take nominations for the election of board vice president. Well, I would like to nominate uh, Jim Ballou as our um, board vice president for the upcoming fiscal year. Second. We've got a second from me, Mike. Mike, okay. Were there any other nominations before the board for vice president? Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Robbins, a second by Commissioner Moline. Amy, would you call roll, please? Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. President Dorhopper? Yes. Okay, congratulations. Um, I'll turn it back over to you, President Dorhofer. Next item would be appointments for the Secretary, Treasurer, and Attorney. Could I have a motion to appoint Executive Director Fujiru as the Board Secretary, Superintendent DeSico as the Board Treasurer, and Trussler LLP as our Board Attorney? So moved. So moved. Second? I'll second you. Discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. President Dorhopper? Yes. And, uh, next item would be committee liaisons. Uh, Commissioner Kessler, I'd like for you to continue as the liaison for Hawthorne School District 73. And okay. for the village. Yes. <laughs> And for the village of Vernon Hills, um, I'd like to appoint commissioners Ballou and Dorhofer to act as the liaisons with the village. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Lakeview Utility Easement Agreement. Could I have a motion to adopt the Commonwealth Lakeview Easement Agreement? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Moline. Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. President Dorhopper? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the ComEd Gross Point ROW 2020. Could I have a motion to adopt the Commonwealth Edison Gross Point 
2020 ROW. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Commissioner Robbins. Yes. Commissioner Ballou. Yes. Commissioner Kessler. Yes. Commissioner Moline. Yes. President Dorhopper. Yes. Next item on the agenda is administrative policy appendix B, investment policy. Policy. Could I have a motion to adopt the revised appendix B of the Park District administrative policy? So moved. Second. Second. Yeah. Discussion. Roll call. Commissioner Moline. Yes. Commissioner Blue. Yes. Commissioner Robbins. Yes. Commissioner Kessler. Yes. President Dorhopper. Yes. Next item on the agenda is the Family Aquatic Center opening 2020. Jeff, want to bring us up to speed as to what's going on today? Sure. Um, the uh, you know, there's been it's it's been as of yesterday we were notified by the Commerce by the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, who is the presiding uh, department of the state that's rolled out all of the Restore Illinois uh, guidelines for day camps, fitness, um, manufacturing, outdoor recreation, etc. Um, and there was a uh, an email that came through late last night. Uh, indicating that in phase three, the public pools were not going to be allowed to be opened, but condominium pools and country clubs were. Um, so there's been a, a, a pretty uh, a pretty elaborate effort on behalf of, uh, of public park districts across the state. Needless to say, this has been going on for weeks uh, to get some kind of an answer. We've always thought we were working with the Illinois Department of Public Health and to get DCEO to deliver this, we were a little little mixed on that. We uh, talked at length. In fact, Dave and I were on a call, and I've spoken with most of the board members uh, with our our council from the Illinois Association of Park Districts this morning. Uh, that uh, in turn, what we've heard is that IDPH is actually the uh, main uh, deciding uh, department of the state that'll make this decision, and that they are to deliver. We were told that they're going to deliver a statement uh, of guidance today. Uh, mm -hmm. It is now 7 o'clock. We still haven't seen that. Uh, that would have been nice to get prior to this meeting so we could have provided uh, the board with some direction from that department and obviously our public that um, is anxiously awaiting uh, uh, some direction. Um, so unfortunately, I've been watching my phone. Nothing's coming through um, at this point. It uh, doesn't mean we might see something later tonight, but, um, you know, the guidance is really, those are kind of the, the you know, the Bible that we need to uh, reference uh, when we're opening uh, any kind of programs or facilities. So I wish I had better news for the board tonight uh, and the public, but uh, we just don't. So I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to sit tight until we see um, what prevails. They could very well provide something that just says, nope, you're not going to be able to open a public pool till phase four. Um, and then that just delays our decision or the board's decision. Uh, or they could provide, you know, uh, some direction on phase three uh, with obviously a lot of the efficiencies that uh, have been pretty common with uh, things like our, our fitness center, our day camps and some of our other youth programs. So. Um, that is that is pretty much it that I can you know unfortunately provide for you. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or at this point you know Dave I think I'll just turn it over to you and let you uh, you know if any of the other commissioners uh, want to weigh in on any any comment uh, or if however you want to you know decide to run the rest of the meeting with the public as well. Yeah, I uh, just went on the Department of Public Health. They had two recent news announcements today, and neither one of them were regarding pools. So uh, it's still still not out there. Uh, commissioners, anybody have any comments? Would anybody from the public like to address us?
Oh, we're not getting a lot of help with input here. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Well, Commissioner Commissioner Ballou and Commissioner Robbins want to weigh in. Commissioner Robbins. No, I, I think until we get some more insight from the authorities, you know, we really there's there's nothing to do but just stand by and hopefully we get some something in the very soon uh, so that we can then make a decision for our summer. Commissioner Ballou. I have to agree with Commissioner Robbins. Unfortunately, I feel like we're being held hostage by the state. Um, just there's no decision one way or the other. Um, and without some guidance, I don't know how we make a decision that way other than to stay the way we are right now. Anyone else have a comment? Mr. Kessler? I guess, I mean, the, the same thing, I guess it's, it's a hard decision and it's not our decision yet to make. Um, and once we get the news, I guess I just want to make sure that, you know, the safety is there, the um, wh whatever we could do to make it, if, if we can open it, that it is safe and programmable and, and we can maintain it. Um, so I think, I think there needs to be a lot of creative ideas coming up if, if we do get the go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the the easy decision is to just say we're going to shut it down and not do it, and that's what a lot of other park districts have done. Um, I think we are, as a board, committed to trying to provide this amenity to our community in whatever form we can, and with the limited information we've got, unfortunately, we have to kick the can down the road just a little bit until we get some direction from the Illinois Department of Health, or public health, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think staff, we've, we've talked about this at length and we don't have anything new to talk about. I mean, I think staff's as far as they can be with the information they have right now, if we can, as long as things don't dramatically change, I think we're ready to go one way or the other, you know, as limited as it might be, uh, but obviously until we get something from from somebody with official capacity, uh, we're as far as we can be. So, Jeff, fill fill me in a little bit, fill us all in a little bit on if we are able to open up under phase three. If they say you can allow ten, kind of walk through the guidelines of what we're looking at, and then uh, we'll talk next piece. Okay, sure. Um, so not anything dissimilar to what, what uh, Joe was talking about earlier with Lakeview uh, as a facility opens when you have a limit of only 10 people, um, it's going to be a reservation system that we're gonna probably have to put in place uh, and limit, you know, it's a little different when you can take a group exercise class for one hour than it is to tell somebody, um, you know, you can bring your three kids in for one hour. Uh, to, to swim for a public swim. Um, so that's, you know, essentially those are kind of just the parameters we're gonna, you know, the staff has been talking about in terms of how we would roll it out. Um, there's been conversation about, you know, opening up the facility um, early in the morning for adult lap swimming uh, and having a prescribed time for that every day. Not, not anything dissimilar than we've done in the past having a prescribed time for a parent tot swim uh, for some of our, our younger younger children, having a prescribed time, limited prescribed time for open public swim. And then, uh, you know, there might be some evening, uh, early evening time that we would have to set aside for our, uh, our turtle swim club is another uh, issue. We would still, if we had the opportunity to do swim lessons, we would facilitate that over at the Lakeview Center. So, um, you know, with that being said, it's it's a pretty difficult time. You know, I, I think with with the lap swimming, I think the 10 and under is is really doable. I think when you get into the parent tot time and you get into open public swim time, it's pretty tough when you got, a, you know, potentially a really hot day and you can only allow 50 people in your pool over a course of five hours. But it's something it's you know, we've received a lot of uh, feedback uh, from our 
from our community that, you know, especially our, our children in our community that are just looking for something to do, um, something other, you know, other than just walking around the block or, you know, we can't even open our playgrounds. We've been told we can't open our playgrounds until phase four, um, which is, you know, probably sometime late at the earliest, I think the governor said, June 26th at the earliest. That's assuming all of the elements line up. Uh, it's probably more practical that it might be early July. So, you know, this is an opportunity. Uh, again, uh, I want to make it clear to the public too that we won't do anything unless we're secure and that it's going to be a safe and practical, uh, you know, application of what of what we do when we open our doors, if we open our doors. Um, and then the board has to be cognizant. You know, we've presented to you the uh, financial implications uh, of doing this. Very limited revenue, uh, still heavy on the expense side in terms of the efficiencies we have to put in place with uh, sanitizing uh, a lot of different things within the within the facility and still staffing it uh, on a uh, required basis as well. Um, so uh, that's it's you know kind of it. Phase four gets us at least a little bit because you know the volume of, of participation can go up to fifty instead of 10 so it makes things a little bit more uh, uh you know maybe financially you're maybe bringing in a little bit more revenue uh, but you know therein still then uh, lies you're going to have a limited amount of people that can come in on the hour and it's safe to say that under any scenario the slides and the and the lazy river probably are not going to open this year um, very safe to say, unless the board's interested in uh, really an excessive uh, loss uh, that you want to undertake. Um, you know, we're, I think we've provided estimates to the board with that that far exceed $200,000 for the summer if you opened up the back of that, uh, that site. So that's why we're, we're suggesting as a staff to just open the front half of the pool so we can at least limit some of your loss. Yeah, and I think it's important for everyone to understand that while we are committed to to trying to get the pool open, at the end of the day, we are stewards of the community and we have to make the best financial decisions. Um, doesn't mean everything is a profit and loss, but everything has a, a weighted value to it. And I think this board has demonstrated uh, very, very well over the years that they make good economic decisions and uh, we will continue to do that. So. Is there anyone from the public who would like to, to say anything at this time? All right, we will wait to hear from the uh, public health, the Illinois Department of Public Health, and uh, we will get back to it at then. Next item on the agenda would be uh, commissioner comments. Commissioner Blue? Nothing this evening, thank you. Commissioner Moline? Same. Everybody stay healthy. Commissioner Robbins? Uh, nothing this evening. Commissioner Kessler? Nothing this evening. Uh, I've got uh, a couple things. Cheryl, thank you very much for your time shooting the videos and your patience with me. I greatly appreciate that. And would the board be interested? Our next meeting is June 25th. Would the board be interested in having it in person since we can do it with 10 and under now? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Commissioner Kessler, Commissioner Blue. <laughs> are we are we sitting ten feet away? Oh yeah, we, we would set it up that yeah you would be you would be spread apart. You would have to be yeah. Well, I assume we're not <laughs> probably not a, yeah. probably not a meeting room. Uh, we'd probably have to be in the community room. Yes, more than likely. I'm, yes, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay, we'll 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 set that up. We just want to make it for the public. So if they want to attend the meeting, the public can still attend the meeting. You can have ten. We just need to spread you out uh, more effectively. Not anything unlike you've seen some of the press conferences that have occurred at the federal and state level, where they have reporters in. You know, they're spread out. Um, you know, pretty pretty nicely. We would do the same thing. With that, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please.
Commissioner Blue? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. President Dorhofer? Yes, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good attendance.